Today, I will show you guys how to do optimization questions for your Calculus 1 class. And these questions are from the Single Variable Calculus textbook by James Stewart. We will go over the questions, and of course, you guys can go down this file in the description. Take notes along the way, or even better, try the questions first before you watch the video. And after the video, you will be more comfortable with optimizations. And if you are a calculus teacher, please also feel free to use the video and also the worksheet with your students. And now let's go ahead and get started with number one. Right here it says we are going to find the dimensions of a rectangle and the area of it is 1000 meters squared. And we want the parameter to be as small as possible. All right, I would like to show you guys two super powerful words whenever we are solving word problems. The first word is no. And this means we are going to write down what we know. And sometimes we can draw pictures to illustrate the situation. Here we are talking about a rectangle. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. But we don't know the dimensions. So here's the deal. Whenever we don't know anything, let's just go ahead and label them with variables. We have two things that we don't know. Lengths and widths. You can use L and W, but I will do it the classic way, X and Y. X is usually horizontal, and then Y is usually vertical, so like that. Now, it says the area is 1,000 meters square, so we know area, based on our picture, is just X times Y, and that must be equal to 1,000. Okay, so that's pretty much all the information that we know. And the second powerful word is want. And this means that, what do we want to know? We want the parameter to be as small as possible, so that means we want the minimum of the parameter. So how can we write an equation for the parameter? Take a look at this picture. The parameter means that you go around the rectangle, so we have x, and then this is also x. So we have 2x, and we have to add it with y and y, so 2y. Well, how do we find the minimum or the maximum of a function? We take the derivative, set it equal to zero, look for the critical numbers, yeah? And then try to see if the critical numbers will give you the minimum or the maximum, yeah? So here we will take the derivative, but the parameter has both x and y. Not that good yet, but don't worry. Let's go back to the constraint equation, and that's the equation that we know. That's the condition on x and y x times y must be equal to 1,000. We can divide both sides by x and say y equals 1,000 over x. And then plugging this into here, then we will get an equation in terms of just x. So p is equal to 2x plus 2y, and y is that 1,000 over x. Perfect. And notice, this is now an equation in terms of just x. So I can come here and say p is a function of x. And this is the function notation. If you keep it as p, it's totally OK. Now we will just take the derivative. But before that, let's fix this a little bit. p of x is equal to 2x plus 2 times 1,000, which is 2,000. And the x on the bottom, let's write it as x to the negative 1. We are now ready to take the derivative, p prime of x. The derivative of 2x is just 2, and the derivative of 2,000 times x to the negative 1. Put a negative 1 to the front, and minus 1. So we have minus 2,000 x to the negative 2. That's the derivative. Now, to find the critical numbers, we will set this to be 0. And you have a couple ways to solve this. You can try to solve this by factoring, or I will do it this way. I'll put this to the other side and then try to isolate the x. So we get 2 equals positive 2,000. And the x to a negative 2 is the same as saying over x squared. So let's do that. Now multiply both sides by x squared. We get 2x squared equals 2,000. Divide both sides by 2 we get x squared equals 1,000. And for this, we can just take the square root on both sides. 
and you should keep in mind whenever we take the square root we should have the plus or minus but in this case we are talking about length so the negative doesn't make sense the only critical number that we care is square root of a thousand and square root of a thousand is the same as x is equal to 10 times square root of 10 because you can break this down as 100 times 10 and square root of 100 is the next number 10. All right, now we will have to test out if this is indeed a minimum or maximum. Let's do the second derivative test, meaning take the second derivative, p double prime of x. Look at this and take the derivative. All right, the derivative of 2 will give you 0, and the derivative of this, we put a negative 2 to the front, and then minus 1, we get positive 4,000 times x to the negative 3. And when we put 10 square root of 10 into the second derivative, we will get 4,000 over x to the third power, and the x value is 10 square root of 10. And this is clearly bigger than 0, and that's all we care. So we can say something like this. The first derivative at 10 square root of 10 is equal to 0, and the second derivative at 10 square root of 10 is positive. Remember, when the first derivative is equal to 0, the tangent line there is flat. And when the second derivative is greater than 0, that means the function is concave up. So as you can see, we have a minimum. So we can just say, based on this and that, so there is a minimum at x equals 10 square root of 10. And in fact, this is the only minimum, so it's just the absolute minimum as well. And now, once we have the x, don't forget to get the y. y equals 1,000 over x. And x is 10 square root of 10, so let's go ahead and put that down. Reduce this, so this and that cross out. Oops, the x is 10. All right, how do we simplify this? We can multiply the top and bottom by square root of 10. Square root of 10 times square root of 10 is just a 10. And I can reduce this with one of the zeros. So in fact, y is 10 square root of 10 as well. Notice x and y, they are both equal to 10 square root of 10. So in fact, this rectangle is actually a square. And that's a fact. Whenever you have a given area, and if you want the parameter be, if you want the parameter to be as small as possible, you are pretty much getting a square. And I'll just write down the answer in this case like that. We want the dimension to be 10 square root of 10 meters by 10 square root of 10 meters. So this is how I will present the answer. All right, now second question. Here we have a farmer, and he has 24 feet of fencing. And he wants to fence off a rectangular field. So again, it's a rectangle. And that boards a straight river. He needs no fence along the river. So no fence along the river. What are the dimensions? Again, whenever the question is asking for dimension, you should give like, you know, whatever feet times whatever feet. And at the end, we want to get the largest area. So now, let's go ahead and write down what we know from the equation. Draw a picture along the way too, right? So here, let's say we have a river. So let's say this is the river. Right, so this is a river. And maybe you have some fish like this if you want. So that's, that's horrible. All right, fish like this. I'm not going to draw fish anymore. All right, so just like water. All right, anyway. All right, a rectangle like this, maybe. Mm, we have 24 feet of fence. So that means 
this plus this plus that is 2400 feet, no, 2400 feet. Again, we don't have the variables, so let's go ahead and say x, and this is also x, and this is y, yeah? So this means we know that 2x plus y, that should be 2400. So that is what we know. I don't know how many fishes are there, but that doesn't matter. Now, what do we want to know? We want the biggest area of this rectangular field. So the area in this case is just x times y. Good. All right. Now, similar to earlier, the area equation has both x and y, but it's okay. Let's look at this constraint equation. And we can just simply put the 2x to the other side and say y equals 2400 minus 2x and then put this into this y. So we will get a and it will be a function of x only and that's just x times y which is 2400 minus 2x. And we are going to just take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and make sure that it will give us a maximum. And that's pretty much it. Before we take the derivative, though, do the algebra. So a of x, distribute the x, we get 2400x minus 2x squared. Now take the derivative, a prime of x. This right here will give us just 2400. And then this right here will give us minus 4x. And now here we go. Set this to be 0. And, uh, you know, we will just get 2400 equals 4x. Of course, divide the form on both sides. x is equal to 600. And that's the critical number. Now, I will just use a second derivative test. And it really depends on your instructor, because sometimes maybe if you're taking a multiple choice question, then this is pretty much the answer. You don't have to verify it. But I will still verify it for you guys. Second derivative. In fact, this is an open down parabola, so you have a maximum. But second derivative. Take a look at here. Take the derivative. The derivative of 2400 is 0. The derivative of negative 4x will give you negative 4. So of course, a double prime at 600, this right here will just be negative 4. Right, it's a constant negative 4. So it's by default, less than 0. And now let's just go ahead and say what we did earlier. The first derivative at 600 is equal to 0 and the second derivative there is less than zero. So it's flat and concave down. That means there is a maximum. And again, you can say like local min, sorry, local max or absolute max. This is also the absolute max. But I'll just say this, there's a maximum at x equals 600. That being done, let's go ahead and find out the y, which is 2400 minus 2x, and that means 2400 minus 2 times 600. Work that out, you will get 1200. Answer. Let's just go ahead and write 600, and this is feet, by 1200. And of course, you can show this picture to the farmer so he knows uh, what the 600 feet is. Right. So both sides, right, 600 feet, and then a longer side, 1,200 feet. That should be pretty good. Okay, number three. First, it tells us that we want the top and bottom margins of a poster to be six centimeters each, and the side margins are four centimeters each. And of course, the poster is in the shape of a rectangle in this case. And it says that the area of a printed material 
is fixed to be at 384 centimeters squared. We are going to find the dimensions of the poster that will give us the smallest area. So here we go. Let's go ahead and write down what we know. Draw a picture for this, of course. So let's say this is the poster and maybe you have a person inside be happy dancing or whatever. I don't know though. But I don't know the dimension either. So let's label them with, let's say, Y and X. All right. And we do know that the inside has to be 384 for the area. Good. So based on this, we know X times Y, which is the area of the printed material inside, is 384. Now, we also want to have margins for this poster. For the top and bottom, we want to have six centimeters six centimeters each so go up by six likewise extend this by six as well so it will be like this and like that and for each side we want to have four centimeters so extend it to be four and then likewise four so that's the picture all right that's pretty much a uh, scenario and now what do we want to know? We want the minimum, right? The smallest area. So the minimum of the area of the whole thing, right? The whole thing. So let's put on capital A for the area. Now this is still rectangle, but be really careful with this. Here on the bottom, notice here we have the X already. Right? This is also X, yeah? X. But we do have to account for the 4 and 4 for the margins. So altogether, we have x plus 4 plus 4, which is x plus 8. So that will be on the bottom here. And for the side, again, pay attention to here we have the y, and then we have the 6 here and 6 here. Altogether, we have a total of y plus 12. All right, so that means our area is x plus y, x plus 8 times y plus 12. All right, once we have the constraint equation and the equation that we want to get the minimum of, then we can just do the usual steps. So right here, from the constraint equation, divide both sides by x. So we have 384 over x and put it to here. So area will be a function of x and that will be x plus 8 times the y is 384 over x which is the same as x to the negative 1 and uh, that's put a plus 12. Now do algebra before we do calculus so let's go ahead and foil this out so we take this times that x times x to the negative 1 is just 1 so it doesn't matter anymore we will just have 384 and then x times 12 and then we do 8 times 384 that will give us plus 3072 and that's x to the negative 1 power and lastly we do 8 times 12 and that will be plus 96 and we can combine this and that together and that will give us 480. Also, we don't really need to do that, but I will still do it anyway. 480 plus 12x and then plus 3072x to the negative 1. With that being done, here we can go ahead and take out the derivative. a prime of x. This will give us 0. This will give us 12. And then the last part, put the power to the front, minus 1. We will get minus 3072 and then x to the negative 2. And then same thing. Go ahead, set this to be 0, and then we are going to solve for x. And to do so, I will put this to the other side and say 12 is equal to 3072 over x squared and then just multiply x squared on both sides and all that and perhaps I would like to 
just continue writing down here, I guess. Yeah. 12x squared equals 3072. And then do the usual algebra. Divide the 12 on both sides. We get 256. x squared is equal to 256. And just take the positive square root on both sides. All right. Again, it's usually plus or minus, but in this case, the negative doesn't matter. And when you take the square root of 256, you get 16. So critical number at x equals 16. Now, let's go ahead and proceed with the second derivative test. Right here, I will get a double prime of x. I will be looking at this. All right, the derivative of 12 is 0. And the derivative of this, let's put a negative 2 to the front and then minus 1 to the power. So we will get 3072 times 2. And we get positive 6144x 6, to the negative 3. And uh, let's just plug in and check. You will see that a double prime of 16. This right here, again, it's extremely clear that the top is positive over the bottom is also positive. So all in all has to be positive. So same statement like earlier. The first derivative at 16 is equal to 0. And the second derivative there is positive. So we have a minimum. Here is a minimum at x equals 16. All right, we have our justification. Now, y equals 384 over x, which is 384 over x is 16. And uh, let's just go ahead and work that out. We get 24. So the answer will be and we have to be careful, it says that we have to find the dimension of the poster. So we should also include the margin. That means we will have to do x plus 8, right? So we actually will get 24 right here. And the unit is centimeters. By the y, y should be added with 12. So together we will have 36 centimeters. And uh, let me just box this. And again, let me just denote that this right here, it's because we have to do x plus 8, and that's 16 plus 8. That's how we get a 24. And for the 36, it's because of the y plus 12, and that's 24 plus 12. So that's it. All right, number four. We are going to find the dimension of the rectangle with the largest area. And it says that we want the base to be on the x-axis and the two vertices are above the x-axis and they are on the parabola y is equal to 12 minus x squared and if you haven't done so already you should definitely try this question first before you continue watching the video especially you have seen three examples already you should be able to do this on your own done okay let's go ahead and write down what we know we have a parabola, so let's go ahead and draw that parabola first. 12 minus x squared. The minus x squared is an open down parabola. This 12 tells us to drag the parabola up 12 units. So we will have a picture like this. Okay, we want to have a rectangle. And it says that the base is on the x-axis, so it will look like this. And the two other vertices are above the x-axis and lying on the parabola. That means we should just go up like this, like that. But here's the deal though. If I drew the rectangle like this, then you know that the blue one and the red one, they will have different areas. So we are trying to see how to draw it so that the area of the rectangle is the biggest. And now here's the deal. That's label. This right here will be x, and this right here will be y. 
And notice though, the x is only this part. I should really emphasize that, and that's the y. All right. So let's see. We know that y is equal to 12 minus x squared. It's nice. It gives us an equation already. Now we want the maximum of the area. What's the area of this rectangle based on our labeling? Well, sorry. Here we have x times y, but we want the whole thing. So we have to double that. That's why it's 2 times x and y. Be careful with this. Now you are pretty much ready to go. Put the y here, and then let's just see. We will have a as a function of x, and that's 2 times x times y, which is 12 minus x squared. And then do the algebra first. So a of x is equal to 24x minus 2x to the third power. All right. Take the derivative, we get the derivative of 24x, which is 24, and then this derivative will give us 6x squared. And now, of course, we'll set this to be 0, and uh, let's put this to the other side. So we get 24 is equal to 6x squared, and divide both sides by 6, we get x squared is equal to 4, and take the square roots on both sides. And we just need to consider the positive. So the critical numbers that we care in this case is just x is equal to 2. If you say x is equal to negative 2, then you are looking at the other direction. And maybe you can still work that out, but 2, you know, it's going to be the answer. Anyway, though, a double prime for the second derivative. Take a look at this. The derivative of 24 is 0, and the derivative of this is negative 12x. The second derivative, when x is equal to 2, we get negative 12 times 2. And that will be negative 24, which is less than 0. And now, let's go ahead and justify that. You see, the first derivative at 2 is 0, and the second derivative there is less than 0. Therefore, there is a maximum at x is equal to 2. All right, we want the dimension of the rectangle. Be careful with this. y will be 12 minus x, and then square that, which is 12 minus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, and then, I'm sorry, and then 12 minus 4 is 8. Good. But be careful with this though. The dimension is not 2 by 8. Rather, we will have to account for the whole thing. The base is 2x, right? For the rectangle. For the rectangle. So you actually have to double this. So the answer is actually 4 by 8. All right? So that's the area, that's the dimension that will give you the biggest area, 4 by 8. Okay, number 5. Slightly more difficult, but it's still okay. Here we go. Right here it says that we have a right circular cylinder, just like a regular single cylinder. And the base is a circle. And it says it's inscribed, meaning that you are going to put you are going to form a cylinder inside of a sphere. So inscribe in a sphere, which is like a basketball. And the sphere has a radius of 4. And we are going to find the biggest possible volume of such a cylinder. So here, let me give you guys a picture. This is what we know. We have a sphere like this. Boom, it's a, pretty much a circle. And to draw a sphere, you do this, this, and then that, all right? And it says the sphere has the radius 4, so this right here is 4. Now, we want to just kind of construct a cylinder inside. So you can put a cylinder like this, just make a horizontal cut, and then like a vertical cut, and then somehow you make a cylinder like this. 
And you can imagine if you make the cylinder like this, they will have different volumes. So let's just take a look at the blue one and try to see what we can possibly do with this. All right, I will have to remind you guys that. So let me just remind you, note. When we have a volume of a cylinder, when it's a circular cylinder, this right here is pi r square h, right? And the cylinder is the circular cylinder like that. So one of the formulas that you should definitely remember for uh, automation also related rates. But let me just write this. Okay, so uh, based on this, what do we know though? That's it, huh? And what do we want to know? Well, we do want to know the volume of the cylinder and we want it to be the smaller, we want to be the biggest possible. So we want the maximum of the volume of the blue cylinder. So how can we do it? Well, it looks like we need to have the R. We don't have the R yet, and we don't have the H yet. But don't worry, this is how we do the math. Here, let's take a look at the sphere. If you just look at it from one side, then that's called the cross section, which is just going to be a circle. And then if you put the X and Y axis, like we usually do when we do calculus and even physics, we will put a x1 axis. So let's say this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. All right. Now, what does this do? In fact, this right here will turn the question like what we did earlier. Yeah, do you see it? This picture and this picture. Here, we also need to know the equation of the circle. And the equation of the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Our center is at 0, 0, so we just have x squared plus y squared equals r, which is 4, and we square that. So that's the equation of the circle. Now, we want the radius that we talked about earlier. From here to here, it's the radius of the cylinder. I don't know what that is. I'll call that x. And from here to here, it will be the height of the cylinder, but not really. It's technically the y because I'm putting down the x or y plane like that, right? So here's the deal. Based on our labeling, our volume of the blue cylinder is pi and then the radius is x, so I will just multiply by x, and we square that, because that's the radius squared, and we want the whole height, right? Remember the height? It's from here to here. It's 2y by symmetry. On the top is y, the bottom will also be y, so the whole thing is 2y. So multiply by 2y. All right, so that's the hat. The trick is you will have to look at this as a cross section and also recall the equation of a circle. Now, same thing. Here we have the y, so perhaps let's go here and uh, minus x squared on both sides. So we get y squared is equal to 4 squared, which is 16, and then minus x squared. And then just take the positive square root. So y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared because based on our picture, we just want the y to be on the top right here. And if you have a negative, you will end up with a negative volume. So just positive square root is okay. And then we'll put this right here. That will give us the volume in terms of just x. And let me write down the 2 first. So we will have 2 pi and then x squared. And then for the y, which is that square root. Right? Square root of 16 minus x squared. And unfortunately, we cannot really do any algebra to simplify this expression. So we'll just have to do calculus now. And we will have to use the product rule. So go ahead. 
I will look at this as the first function. So we will have 2 pi x squared times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is, well, the square root is, we will have the over 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. And don't forget the chain rule. So multiply by negative 2x. And then we are going to add the second function, which is the square root 16 minus x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the first. For that, we just have to do the power rule for this. Bring the 2 to the front, we get 4 pi, and then x to the first power. That's that. And then perhaps we can clean things up a little bit. 2 and 2 cancel. Eh, that's about all. And then I'm just going to rewrite this. This is again our first derivative. So x squared times x, we have x to a third power, and that's a negative here. So we have negative 2 pi x to the third power over square root of 16 minus x squared. And then for the other part, let's write it as plus 4 pi x times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Let's get the common denominator, multiply the top and bottom by square root of 16 minus x squared. So that means we get both of them being dividing square root of 16 minus x squared. And for the first part, we have negative 2 pi x to the third power. And then we see that this and that multiplying, we will just get 16 minus x squared. And then take this, distribute it. So 4 times 16, we get plus 64, and then the pi x. And then 4 pi x times that is minus 4 pi x to the third power. And we have two more things that we can do, right? Combine this and that to this, these two things. So we get negative 6 pi x to the third power plus 64 pi x over square root of 16 minus x squared. Whew, a lot, huh? And now go ahead and set this to be 0. And in fact, you don't need to worry about the critical number when the derivative is not defined, because that's the case when x is equal to 4. Because when you plug in 4 into the volume equation, you get 0 for the volume. So you don't really have to worry about that. That being said, just to worry about where the derivative is equal to 0, which is just the top being equal to 0. So we look at negative 6 pi x to the third power plus 64 pi x being equal to 0. To solve this equation, let's go ahead and factor out negative 2 pi x. So we will get 3x squared minus 64 divided by 2 is 32, and the pi x are out already. And we have critical numbers. When this is equal to 0, that means x is equal to 0, but we don't care about this, seriously, because that will give us 0 for the volume. And we care about 3x minus 32 is equal to 0, which is 3x squared equals 32. And then we can divide both sides by 3, take the square root, so we get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 32 over 3. And of course, we are just going to get rid of the negative. And now, yeah, of course, you know, this is going to give us the answer, but I will still provide a quick verification. The derivative at square root of 32 over 3, and notice I didn't simplify this, because you guys will see why. The derivative is 0, and I will just do the first derivative test, because I don't want to take the derivative of that again. All right, I will just show you like this. The derivative at here is 0. And if you put a number less than this into the derivative, I will tell you, you will get past the derivative right before it. And if you put a number slightly bigger than this into the derivative, you will get negative. 
So as we can see, V prime changes from positive to negative at x equals square root of 32 over 3. So there is a maximum. And this is called the first derivative test. And yeah, shouldn't that should be okay. Now, we are going to answer the question, and it's only asking us to get the largest possible volume. So I don't need to give the dimension. I will just plug in the critical number, which is this right here, into our volume equation. So as we can see, we will get volume of square root of 32 over 3. That is just 2 pi times x squared, which is you know, the square root and the square will cancel each other out very nicely. That's why I didn't simplify. But anyway, square root 16 minus x, right, which is 32 over 3 square. And now let's just go ahead and do the work. So this right here is equal to 2 times pi times square root and the square cancel, so 32 over 3 times. Okay, for the inside here, Go ahead and just work it out on your own. It's just 16 minus 32 over 3, which is 48 over 3, minus 32 over 3, which we get 16 over 3. And uh, that will be 2 pi times 32 over 3 times 4 over square root of 3. So all in all, I will just you know, write this down better for you guys. We get a 32 here. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times that is 256 pi over 3 square root of 3. And this right here will be the answer. And uh, oh, I didn't give you guys the units, but I would just say, let's say, yeah, whatever unit is. So unit square right so that's it okay number six here we have a rectangular package so here we have a picture for it and if you want to send this via the postal servers then you must have a maximum combined length and girth and the girth is that if you go around the cross section so it's this part right here and here we will say the cross section is a squared and altogether the maximum combined length and girth has to be 90 inches. And we are going to find the dimensions of the package that will give us the maximum volume right here. Okay, so here we go. This is pretty much what we know. We have a picture already. And uh, let's write an equation for this. Well, we want the cross section to be um, a square, so we have to have 4x, right? Because again, we must have one, two, three, four, four sides. And we will also have to combine this with the length, which is y. So we have 4x plus y, and altogether that has to be equal to 90. And what do we want to know? We want the maximum volume of this box. Well, the volume of this box is just going to be the area of the cross section, which is x times x. That's x squared and we multiply by the y. All right, now let's come here for the constraint equation. So for y, minus the 4x on both sides, so y equals 90 minus 4x, and then we put this into this y. Okay, so we are looking at volume as a function of x, and that will be x squared times the y, which is 90 minus 4x. And now let's do the usual business, which is the algebra. Before we do calculus, we have 90x squared minus 4x to the third power. And now let's go ahead and take the derivative, which will get 180x minus 12x squared. Then we set this to be equal to zero. And right here, it really depends on how you want to solve it. Perhaps I will actually just do factoring. 180, we will factor out the 12 and also the x. And we will get 15 and then minus x, and that will be equal to zero. And right here, of course, this means 
12x is equal to 0, or 15 minus x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 0, x is equal to 15. I forgot if I said 50 or 15 earlier, but it's 1, 5, 15, all right? So these are the two critical numbers. But of course, we don't consider 0 because otherwise we don't get any volume, so that's clearly not correct. But we can check and verify that when x is equal to 15, we do get a maximum. And here you can also use the first derivative test, like what we did earlier. Especially we have the factor the form of the derivative, and this expression is not so bad. So perhaps let's also do that right here. So first we know that the derivative at 15 is equal to 0. So that means v prime when x is 15. Okay, that's 0. And now pick a number less than 15, let's say 14, and if put it into this expression. Work that out, you will get a positive result. Pick a number bigger than 15, let's say 16, and when we put that right here, 15 minus 16 is negative 1 times positive, right? So altogether we get negative. Alright, now we see the first derivative changes from positive to negative at x equals 15. So we know that there is a maximum. Alright, now we have all the verifications and we want to answer this question by giving the dimension. That means we should find out what y is. And we know y equals 90 minus 4x. And x is 15, so it's 90 minus 4 times 15. 4 times 15 is 60, so y is 30. And now here will be the answer. We need to have 15 inches by 30 inches. And this will do it. So that is number 6. Okay, number 7, be careful with the setup. Here we are going to have a box, like again, right? And the box will have an open top. And it says that this is going to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard 6 feet wide. And we are going to cut off a square from each of the four corners and then bend up the sides. And we are going to find the largest possible volume. So what exactly is going on? Well, let me give you guys a picture. This is what we know. First, we start with a square cardboard, so a picture like this. And uh, we know that it's six feet wide. And then we are going to cut off a square from each corner. So like this, like this, like this, like that. But how much are we going to cut off? We don't know, right? So here, let's label that as x. Likewise, this will be x. Here, this will be x. This will be x. And this will be x. And this will also be x. And then if you look at the inside here, we are going to bend up each of the four sides right here. And then the blue square in the dashed line uh, will be the base of the box. So what's happening is like this. We have the base right here. And like this, this is a 3D picture. And the X will be the height of the box. So it will be like this, like this, and like that. All right. And then, of course, we can finish this picture. Now, we will have to figure out an expression. For the blue part, have a look. Originally, the whole thing here is 6, but we cut off x here and also x here. So the blue part is actually just 6 minus 2x, right? 6 minus 2x. So that will be here. Likewise, this side here will also be 6 minus 2x, and that will be the other side here, 6 minus 2x. And the red part is x. And that's the height of the box. Good. And in fact, we don't really have an equation, right? Because technically, we only have like the given square piece of cardboard. That's all. All right. Now, let's see what do we want to know then. Well, we want to have the biggest possible box. So we want the maximum. And we want the volume of this box. And notice that everything's in terms of x already. 
So this is great. We want the maximum and volume of x is just x times this times that, which is 6 minus 2x and then square. OK, we can actually do some algebra first. Let's multiply this out. So that will be x at the front. And then we have 6 squared, which is 36 minus. Don't forget to do the middle term, which is 2 times this and that. 2 times 6 is 12 times negative 2x. We have a total of negative 24x in the middle. And lastly, we do 2x squared, and that will be a plus here, so 4x squared. And then distribute the x, so we get 36x minus 24x squared plus 4x to the third power. Now we take the derivative, 36 minus 48x plus 12x squared. And now we are going to set this to be equal to 0. And to solve this, here we have a quadratic equation. Let's factor out 12 first. And let me write down this term first. We have x squared. And then factoring out 12, we get minus 4x in the middle. And then um, factoring out 12 on 36, we get plus 3 left. And we can factor it. We get x minus 1 times x minus 3. And that's equal to 0. So now, from here, we know x has to be 1. From here, we know x has to be equal to 3. So we have these two critical numbers, 1 and 3. Which one's the answer? Be careful. 3 is not, because we are cutting off 3 feet from each side. In that case, then we don't get a box, right? So 0 volume. But I will still verify for you guys. Let's say right here. Uh, let's do the first derivative test. We know that the derivative at 1 is equal to 0. Let's do phi prime. When x is 1, pick a number slightly less than 1. Let's say 0 0.5. Plugging, we get positive because we get negative times negative. So positive. And then pick a number bigger than 1. Let's say 1.2 or something you will get negative because 1.2 minus 3 is negative and times the other factor is positive. So altogether it's negative. So right here, I will say the first derivative changes from positive to negative at x equals 1. So there is a maximum. That being said, we are going to find the biggest box. That means I will just have to compute v of 1. And our volume equation is right here. So let's just go ahead and put a 1 in there. So we get 1 times 6 minus 2 times 1 and then squared. Work that out, we will get 4 squared, which is 16. So I will just answer it right here like this. The biggest possible volume is 16 feet cube. And that's it. All right, number eight, last question. We have a box again, and this time we have square base as well, like earlier, and we want to have an open top just like earlier. But it tells us that we must have the volume of 32,000 centimeter cube. And we are going to find the dimension of the box that will minimize the amount of material used. That means we have to find the surface area and minimize it. We have a box, so let me just put a box like this, with square base. But I don't know how long each side is, right? So I will just label this as x, and that will be x, because it's square on the bottom. And for the height, I will just call that to be y. And we know the volume is x times x times y, which is x squared times y. And it's given to be, it has to be equal to 32,000. Good. And now we will have to find the minimum of the surface area of the box. And now let me kind of remind you guys how to find the surface area. We'll just have to break this apart and the picture will, similar, will be similar to what we did right here. So have a look. We have the bottom, right? So in the middle, we will have a square like so, and that's x and x, all right? And then we also have this on each side, right? So just can attach this part here, and then here, and then here, 
and then here. And there's no top, so this will be it. And this little red part is just Y. This right here, the area for that is X squared. So S is equal to X squared. And we have a total of four of these red parts. And notice that here we have Y, and this is also going to be X. So we must have X times Y, but four of them, so four X, Y. So that's the surface area for this. Now, same thing. Here though, we will have to divide both sides by X squared, and we get Y equals 32,000 divided by X squared. And then plug in and then work that out. Here we get a surface area as a function of X. We get that X squared plus 4X times Y, which is 32,000 over X squared. And again, do some algebra first. Surface area is equal to x squared plus, well, we can cancel out this x with one of them, and then four times 32,000, we get 128,000. x on the bottom, that's right here as x to a negative one. And then take the derivative. We get 2x plus, well, we put the negative one to the front and then minus one, and we get, this is actually going to be a minus 128,000. And here we have x to a negative 2, so that's over x squared. And now we are going to set this to be 0. And perhaps I'm just going to get a common denominator real quick. So I will just multiply x squared here and here. So we are going to get 2x to the third power minus 128,000 over x squared, and this should be equal to zero. And to make that equal to zero, we just have to make sure the top is equal to zero. So 2x to the third power minus 128,000 is equal to zero, meaning we'll just have to get, let me just zoom in like this, put this to the other side. So we have 2x to the third power equals 128,000, divide both sides by two, x to the third power equals 64,000, and here we can just take the cube root on both sides. And when you take cube root on both sides, you don't worry about the plus or minus. So this right here, x will be equal to 40, and this is the critical number that we care. And now, here, how are we going to verify this? So again, you can use the second derivative test or the first derivative test, it's kind of like up to you. And uh, perhaps that's to the second row of the test. Okay, V double prime. Right here, let's look at this form. Take the derivative, we get 2, right, from the 2x here. And then this right here, we'll just put a negative 2 to the front. So it becomes plus 2 times 128,000 and then x to the negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3 like that. And I don't really need to work out the value of this because as you can see, when we plug in 14 to the x, let me tell you, this is for sure going to be positive. So now we know the first derivative at 40 is equal to zero and the second derivative at 40 is positive. So there is a minimum when x is equal to 40. And now we just have to find the dimension. So we have the x already. And keep in mind, x is here and here. And now we just have to give the y. And the y is 32,000 over x squared. And that will be 32,000 over 4t squared. We get 20. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the answer. We have 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters because that's x and x. And lastly, we have 20 centimeters. And that is number eight. So hopefully this video helps. Best of luck in your Calculus 1 class.